Welcome to the Burton Ballers. Ain't got no time for no stallers. Yeah. We are the riders. We're not the fallers. Our channel is growing wider and taller. Yeah. We're here to give you the news about your dear beloved blues. Yeah. So if you like this YouTube channel, like, subscribe, and turn on that bell. Yeah. Hey guys, welcome to another edition of um, Burton Ballers and this is the um, match review of our 2-0 uh, defeat against Liverpool. Um, I put a 2-2 draw at the beginning based on the fact that we didn't have a lot of players but when I saw the team that Frank Lampard picked I've changed that because I've said there's no way that we're going to um, even get a point out of this game. It was very, a very negative team that Frank Lampard picked, I thought, and it was quite a um, passive team selection. And what it said to me is that Liverpool, Chelsea didn't have any confidence going into this game that they'll get anything out of the game against Liverpool, that they'll just try and... Um, play counter-attacking football and try and hit them on the break and try and get something out of the game. But for me, that was the wrong uh, selection. Um, I would have gone more with um, a more attacking lineup. Um, I wouldn't have paid those three midfielders because they're too like for like in midfield. I'd have more tended to go with a... Um, just two of those three midfielders. You don't put Kovacic, Jorginho and Kante into the same midfield and expect any sort of creativity from those three. So um, I'd have probably started with Kante and um, Kova and I'd have had someone like... Um, I'd have played um, Havertz maybe as a 10 with Hudson Adoy there. Even if you didn't want to play, if you wanted to keep Havertz in that position, then you play somebody like Sparkly, somebody who's going to give you a bit of a goal threat. So, so I didn't, I wasn't enamoured by Frank Lampard's selections. I'm also not sure about the fitness of, of um, Esther Quetta, why he's not playing at the moment, because well, obviously he had that injury just uh, um, during the FA Cup. So maybe he's trying to nurse him back slowly but um, if he was fully fit I don't see why he didn't play ahead of Alonso. Alonso had another horror show and was responsible for the second goal when Liverpool played a 1-2 around him. So um, so team selection I'll give Frank a big L for for that one. So that's it. I don't know what's going on with the Callum Hudson and Doyle situation. He said about him not training well and he needs to improve in training before he's going to be picked. If that's the case then Hudson and Doyle needs to show more and do more in training, you know, because we've got no fit wingers at the moment and he still can't get a game. So what's that going to say for his career um, at Chelsea? So anyway, so going into the game, OK, we, we held Liverpool. We had them at arm's length. But for me, they were, Liverpool are always going to, our team, we don't really do nil-nils. So they're always going to score a goal at some point. So um, it just takes one mistake. And even though Frank Lampard said at the end with his, his post-match conference is that we, we had them and it just took a mistake. But that's what it does. It takes one mistake. And we had that mistake when Christensen, again a defender, I don't, I don't know why he's highly rated by a lot of our fan base, because a lot of our fan base rate him highly. I've never rated Christensen. He's, he's, he's okay-ish, but no, I just think he's okay. He's not great, and I don't think he'll reach those high standards. And, you know, what was why was he rugby? He was playing the wrong sport today. I think he thought he was playing rugby or wrestling or something. Zane was laughing because the way he just jumped on the back of um, Marnie and said, hey boy, give me a piggy bank or something. I don't know what, he, what, what a piggyback, sorry. So that's probably what he was, he was after because I don't know, I didn't understand that challenge at all. You know, it's better to let him go on and even if he scores, at least we can try and get back with 11 men, you know, rather than trying to um, play 10, you know, it's, it's, uh, play against 10 men is always going to be a difficult task. Um, and 
play with 10 men, sorry, against 11, especially a team like um, Liverpool, is going to be difficult for us. So, uh, and, and Kepa as well. I don't know what he was doing coming so far of his line to get that ball. He had no chance of getting it. And then there was just that miscommunication between the two. And we need to sort out that back line because, you know, it's, it's, it's just the same situation as last season. Um, you know, although I was critical of Frank for his team selection, I'm not really critical. Some people are criticising Frank and said nothing's changed. But what you've got to realise, guys, in today's match, the only two players who were um, different from the last season were Werner, who was playing kind of, he can play on the left, but he's playing out of position ish on the left, and, and Havertz, who's playing out of position as a false number nine. So, apart from that, this is exactly the same personnel as what he had to work with last season. So, guys, this isn't Frank Lampard's team yet. Once I'm going to judge him, once he gets the players that he bought, he bought in, he's made six transfers. The fact that he's, we've bought in so many players means that he he saw areas that needed addressing from last season. So he's, he, the, when, once those players are in the side and playing, that's when I'm going to be judging Fred Lampard. I'm going to be, he's got to step up because if he has his first 11, his preferred 11, and he doesn't do the business with them, then... I will start criticising them. So, you know, I'm going to give them a slight criticism today for the team selection, but I'm going to give them a pass still because, I'll, I'll, you know, I'm waiting for him to, to see what the team does once everyone is fully fit. So, um, Liverpool didn't really get out of second gear today. You know, and as I said, they were in the ascendancy. That's because the way we set up, it put them in the ascendancy and it just we just didn't have an out ball. And every time Liverpool smothered us really well, they stopped us from playing out in possession. That's because we didn't really, as I said, have the midfielders to pick the passes and to you know, beat their press. And the Liverpool pressed really high. And I said it when I saw the team as well. They could afford to press high because we didn't have the pace behind apart from the Werner. Werner was the only one who sort of gave him a bit of trouble in the first half because of his pace, but he didn't have the help. So if we had Werner on one side and the pace of Hudson and Doyle on the other, I think we'd have given him a lot more um, problems. And if we were going to play that way, knocking the long ball up, it would have been better maybe even to have Havertz playing in as one of the three midfielders and having someone like Giroud who can hold the ball up. So at least, because uh, every time the ball was played down long, Havertz wasn't really challenging in the hit in the air. What Giroud can do, can give us that aerial ability. And... Um, we could have not worked on the knockdowns and things like that, the layoffs from Giroud, but you know, the, the, the wrong personnel was deployed for the um, for, uh, wrong personnel was out there, sorry, for the tactics that we were trying to deploy today. Um, so, as I said, Liverpool. Once it went out to 10 men, it was always going to be game over. There's only going to be one winner, you know. And um, the first goal, well worked goal just after half time, as I said, but again. Alonso's fault, you know, didn't, you know, the cross was worked around him, didn't get back in, in time, good header, and 1-0. And, um, you know, can't blame Kepa for that, great, you know, just, but the second one we can definitely blame, blame Kepa for, I don't know what he was doing, you know, this guy, his confidence is shot, he's, I don't like knocking players, I, I really don't, but Kepa, um, his time is up now at Chelsea, you know. I don't know who's going to buy him because nobody's going to be wanting to take him off. Like even on loan, I can't see anyone getting taken him off. So he's going to be a very expensive reserve team goalkeeper. Mendy's going to be confirmed probably by Monday or Tuesday. Can't come to the club quick enough as far as I'm concerned because the defence then is sure with um, Kepa and be, um, behind today. He made a couple of decent saves as well. Okay, so, you know, it wasn't all bad like some people are saying, but, you know, you can't be making big mistakes like that. And even Frank Lampard called him out for that big mistake. You can't be making, as a top class goalkeeper, you just cannot be doing that. So, yeah, he's, he's out. He's, I did say I'll start him in these first two games, especially when we're waiting for Mendy to see how he would react to a new goalkeeper coming in. He hasn't reacted in a positive way at all. You know, it's, if anything, he's just been the same as he was last season. So there's no excuses now when he doesn't get that number one jersey. So no, nothing against him, but sorry, Kepa, you, you, need, you need to go. So um, even at 2-0, Liverpool were really comfortable. They could, if, they, if they wanted to, they could have stepped it up a bit. And, and, but they just 
were comfortable with you know they with what they had they had the 2-0 so they you know, they could have stood. but even when we got the penalty I there was something about today's game it was a really flat game today I wasn't confident you know although Georgina has got 100% penalty record I wasn't confident and when he did when he didn't score the penalty I wasn't for really you know I just expected it and you know I just resigned to it today really I even think even if we did go 2-1 I don't think that would have made any difference in the game anyway Liverpool would have probably just dipped up and scored a third goal anyway so I don't think we'd have come back to 2-2. Two, two. But one thing I would add is when Tammy Abraham came on, all of a sudden we looked a different attacking threat. So, uh, you know, we managed to get our first, was it our first shot on target when he came on. Yeah, first shot on target, actually. And I was thinking, what may have been? What may have been? If we had picked a more attacking lineup at the beginning, I think we'd have given Liverpool a lot more problems, a lot more things to think about, just like Leeds United did last week. Liverpool play this really high line. You know, we needed to ask some questions going forward, not this passive, you know, holding it and seeing what we can get on the break. You know, then we're Chelsea at the end of the day. You know, last season, although we lost three games to Liverpool, they were very, very close and tight margins. But we took the game to Liverpool most of those occasions. So I was, you know, I was better. You know, Frank Lampard said he saw more takeaways this season than last. I disagree. Last season I saw a lot better. I saw us being more aggressive, more on the front foot. And we gave Liverpool a game you know, on all three of those occasions. And with proper, better defending in the game at Hanfield, a bit of luck in the game at Stamford Bridge where Mason Mount should have scored to make it 2-2. And then even in the Super Cup, there was just a penalty shootout, a lot of a penalty shootout. So I think we matched Liverpool more last season when we put took the game to them than we did this season when we tried to play a bit more um, within ourselves. So... Um, it's, it's disappointing, but it's expected at the moment. And I did say to guys, I warned you guys, I said we need a bit of caution. It's not going to happen straight away. A lot of people are moaning at the moment because of this. Come on, we've got to be sensible. We've got to be realistic. This is still a work in progress, yeah? So, but, but pressure's on for Frank now. Once he gets his full players in, he's got to deliver, you know? He's got to deliver, you know? And he knows that. He knows he's got to deliver. So if, 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 his, if results are not going our way, come um, say January, February and he's got his full team in and he's still not learning from the mistakes that he's been making then there may be a change at the end of the season. I'm not calling for a change but I'm just saying there may be so he needs to uh, step up and be aware of, of what may potentially happen. But um, positives today, there was a few positives to take out of the game. Werner, I thought, was exceptional once again, kept trying, kept working hard. And, you know, I think he should have taken the penalty. He, did, he won the penalty, he should have taken it in my book. Kante always plays well against Liverpool. We had another standout performance today. I thought it was good. I thought Tamori, when he came on, had a decent game. Um, Zuma played well as well. So, yes, yeah, so there was a few takeouts from today's game, you know, and it's just, you say margins, but you can't keep going on about margins and everything else. So, you know, we need to bit a lot with injuries. We need to, not sure if our, if our physio department's doing our, our doctors with people just keep getting niggly injuries. I might add just before I go, you know, the fact that Pulisic is always injured. I'm not sure why he doesn't rate us in the doy. I think we need to go out and get another winger as well because, you know, the fact that we have to, have to play Mason Mount out on wide and then last week it was Havertz wide. They're not natural wingers. We need natural wingers in the club. So I'll try and go out and get someone like a Ben Ram or something like that. You can play as a winger you know because, because we, can't, we, don't, we can't trust the wingers that we've got at the moment not because they're not good players just because there's doubts over their fitness so guys comment below tell me what you think about the match and what can be done to improve um, our team um, what do you think of Frank as well do you think we should give him time do you think he's not up to the up to the uh, up to it, up to scratch. Yeah, it'd be interesting to hear what your thoughts are. So let us know below, guys. And don't forget to like, subscribe, turn on all post notifications so you'll be notified every time I make a new video. Until then, I'll see you later. Bye bye.